Hey, I'm Brad Bowen, Musky Country Outfitters from uh, Northern Wisconsin, and I'm sitting down here in the home of Clear Cure Goo and Clear Cure Eyes, South Lake, Texas. Uh, off season, doing a little fly tying and visiting, and um, Brian Carson asked me today to work through one of my top predator patterns. So I'm going to sit down here and tie the Hang Time Optic Minnow, and I get a chance to, for the first time, to use some Clear Cure Goo Eyes. I'm really excited about it, so stay tuned and we'll work you through top shelf musky predator flies. All right, we're starting out. Our base hook is a B10S Stinger. It's a Gamagatsu. Uh, it's one of our standard predator flies, and I go ahead and right away and I knock the barb down on all of our patterns. And then uh, my base thread is a Danville 210 Denier Wax Flymaster Plus. I use that for just about everything. And the pattern we're going to be tying today is a Fire Tiger version. And so we're kind of free to roam about the cabin with our good stuff. And so I'm using, I've chosen a variety of different colors. And we kind of got a chartreuse bucktail. I've got um, kind of a, it's a UV orange bucktail and some black bucktail. And this is prime northern bucktail that we get, premium tail. Uh, you can see what I look for in our predator patterns is a long, beautiful, skinny taper with a lot of flow to it. And we sort through a lot of bucktails to get to this, but it's worth it because in the water and the performance when you go to that extra high level of bucktail makes all the difference in the world. And uh, so when you want to get to that next level, that's what you're looking for, premium tail. Um, also, we've got a new feather product that we're going to be putting out here. You're going to be able to find this pretty soon, muskycountryoutfitters.com, premium tail along with it. This is, uh, this is the top end of the, the barred saddle feather market and I don't quite have a name for it yet but we're we're, uh, we're gonna figure something out but again we find this long flowing fiber beautiful in the water she moves she shimmies and she shakes and again that's what we're looking for as, as much motion without movement as we can get that's what drives those predator fish crazy and uh, you know when you're when you're on putting your reputation on the line you're always looking for the best and that's what where I've come down to I'm gonna finish it off with some great flash we've got some Kelly green we've got some red and we've got a little bit of crystal flash here in this copper color so that's gonna be our base pattern of course we're gonna finish it off with some brushable clear cure goo which is my favorite and uh, the new clear cure goo eyes clear cure eyes and uh, that's kind of a crazy looking fire tiger eye so I'm really excited it's gonna be new for me as well Start out with a real nice base wrap right behind the eye. We're going to come down through here, right, filling the shank up with uh, the thread all the way back to even with the hook point. You don't really need to go back behind that because it'll just cram the fly a little bit. And you can see as we drop our thread down on a plumb line there, it's going to just basically touch that hook shank. So starting out, I'm going to find the longest fibers that I can work with. I come in here right at the base of that bucktail. This is some really, this unusually long bucktail. And so I'm going to get a big fly out of this. And like human hair, you know, bucktail isn't created equally. Depending on the time of the year that the harvest came from, the deer, the area of the country and all that, you're going to find a very diverse product. And it's, when, you're, when you're looking at predator flies, length and flow is a real key thing and so I you know I grab try to grab the same kind of hank throughout this hair feather flash process that I do and that's key when you start working through your your fly tying uh, style just stay consistent with it so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna give the thread a bit of a twist and that keeps some tension in the thread and this first hank of bucktail I'm gonna tie on standard style with the tips going out the back and beyond that then we'll go into the reverse tying style but to lay this down, what we're really doing is we're putting a keel in here, uh, a base of fiber, long fiber, and again, you want to find the longest fiber that you can. I'm going to take about three or four wraps to capture that in there, and then I'm just going to let help help with some tension and distribute that around the hook shank. Um, we're, we're really pulling on Bob Popovic's hollow fly style here. I, I, you know, most of my patterns come from that school of thought, and uh, what I've got then is a really nice halo of hair. It goes out the back, and that'll keep these things really foul free. Uh, when you're, when you're, especially when you're musky fishing, the fish at 10,000 casts, you don't want to waste any of them. You never know where that fish is going to come from. 
and you don't want to have your attention diverted from a fly that's constantly fouling. So uh, this, this style of fly tying really helps you to keep the materials working for you rather than working against you. So we get real nice fiber out the back and, that, and then we're going to lay the feathers and the hair on top of that. So we go hair, flash, feather. So I'll start out with some nice long flashaboo here and uh, yeah, I'll grab 25, 30 fibers, maybe a little more. And the back of the fly is where we get the length. So everything that we apply on this back of this hook is where we get the length of the fly. And depending on the forage item and the species, you know, can be anywhere. We're going to, on a single hook like this, we can go anywhere from a 6 inch to maybe a 11 or a 12 inch fly in this case. And so at this point, I'm going to extend this about a third of the um, the short end of the, the flashaboo, we're going to have that. That's going to get tied in and we're going to reverse tie it. And then I've got about two-thirds of the length or three-quarters of the length of that out the back. So I, I'll slip that around the thread and capture it on the thread and then we'll slide that down on top of the hook shank. And then I'll put a couple of wraps to secure that and then I'm going to distribute that around kind of in a hemisphere. We're only going to let that flash instead of going all the way around the shank of the hook. We're just going to distribute it over that front or that top half of the fly and you can see how that lays back very nicely and again that bucktail fiber is going to allow that flash to flow out the back but not wrap underneath the hook uh, which we want we don't want material that goes back and gets caught in the gape of the hook during the fishing because that ruins the action and basically eliminates productivity from your cast and that's what we're going try, trying to eliminate alright and we're going to come back here and grab a couple of big long barred hackles measure those out so they're going to be about the length of the uh, the flash out the back and then that's where we get our length from we'll match those up lay them in there and I'll trim them up here and apply those both together and I love the the barred hackle because that gives you that beautiful barred look in nature it gives your eye something to really catch into and you know it gives the predator fish sort of a natural appearance most of their prey will have some kind of barred marking on it or just looks realistic and fishes really beautifully as well a lot of a lot of what I do in predator tying is is you know just confidence tying for the angler so we've got hair feather and flash and we're going to continue with that theme throughout and I'll stay with one more hank of the chartreuse bucktail here just to kind of keep that color scheme strong out the back and then we'll move into orange and then we'll finish off with a black so now I'm gonna reverse that I'm gonna tie in the opposite way with the the trim butts facing to the rear and the tips facing forward and then we'll fold back on itself so I, I'm gonna come forward just a little bit I'm gonna leave about a sixteenth maybe an eighth of an inch of a gap uh, point those tips back and they're going to cover up the wraps and the material beforehand that we just previously put on and that helps to prevent uh, you know the predator teeth from getting down in the fly and prematurely like eliminating that fly from use by untying it so th this method of layering these materials and then reverse tying everything allows you to sort of engineer durability into the fly pattern along with the action and the profile so we, we get a lot of benefit from taking this type of material so what I've done is I've you can see I've basically wrapped a hackle of hair and I can determine then the profile of this fly by when I fold, when after I fold that those tips back on themselves I'll pull the, the thread forward and advance it in front of everything and then wrapping back in a kind of a cone depending on how I want to mimic the profile, if I was fishing a crappie or a bluegill or a bunker or some, some kind of bait fish that had a big flat profile, I could keep that hair at a real right angle to the hook. If I'm fishing a shad or a perch or a sucker or something along that line that's more streamlined, then I can, I can put more wraps onto that and drop that profile back into a more streamlined profile. So 
The reverse tying gives you a lot of variation and, ver and versatility in working on your profile and the bulk of the fly or the, uh, the perceived bulk of the fly. A lot of folks will look at these flies and think, wow, there, there's really a lot of material in there, but it's more of, it's more of the uh, ability to mimic something that looks bulky without being actually bulky. So hair, feather, and flash. So we've added the hair, the hair, flash, feather. We're going to go now to the, the green, flash a boo, lace them in here. And at this point, I don't need to length out the back anymore, so I'm going to capture that midway and slide it down the hook, secure it with a few lashes of thread on the top, and I'm going to distribute that around the top half of that hook. Get it all lashed down here. And you can see I've got a little bit, you know, we have a forward progressing taper. And if you're just beginning to tie these things, you're going to really struggle with over bulking these up and, and, and messing around and having uh, too much fiber and too much thread wrap. But as you get to do this and you get comfortable with using this type of technique and this type of material you'll you'll learn to keep that forward taper moving along smoothly and you'll your flies will get a nice balanced look to them and they'll actually fish more balanced when you learn to do that but it takes you know practice it comes through repetition and so don't get discouraged if the first few renditions of this get kind of nasty just learn from that and less is more don't you don't overuse your thread wraps. Don't use more than you need. You don't want to get chintzy on them, of course, because you're going to have a fly that isn't really all that durable and falls apart. So use just enough thread to secure your material 